we are now uh, standing on top of the lobby ceiling of the million dollar, the outer lobby ceiling, which was added in the late 40s or early 50s when all of the theaters felt like it was time to modernize and look great and new and shiny and everything old was kind of old-fashioned and nobody was interested in it anymore. Um, even this level of decoration had been covered up when Bob Vasconian came in and they opened up the old 1940s, 50s dome. It's interesting to note that the Heinsbergen studio did the renovations here um, as they were very involved in, in renovating and restoring theaters everywhere. But in this is one case where they came in and something that looks much more like a Heinsbergen place, they, they turned into something that looks a lot less like a Heinsbergen indication. Now the importance of this theater is, is it Sid Grauman's first big movie palace in Los Angeles. Uh, and it was an innovative theater in just about every way imaginable. But one of the, the key areas where he and his architect, uh, a young guy named Woolett, uh, came into play was he wanted the theater to tell a story. And they chose um, a Ruskin short story or parable called The King of the Golden River. And behind me is the signature mural for the King of the Golden Rival, River, or at least the top part of it. And the good news is we see a little bit of it up here, but it continues down, uh, down into where it would have been uh, eye level in the lobby. The good news is it is eminently restorable. Unfortunately, if you look up above, over the years, some people have not really paid a lot of attention to what was on the other sides of the walls as they improved space in the office building that surrounds us. And I imagine inadvertently, murals was pull peeled off, same thing here. Uh, but the good news is that these are all eminently restorable and very, very likely that we can bring them back. The amazing thing about Woolett in 1918 is the style, which is very impressionistic, and his color palette. He used a huge range of bright colors. And if you see the million dollar today, it's hard to imagine it as being a shiny, bright, and very, very <laughs> colorful theater, which in fact it was. Uh, and this gives you a little taste of, of what's there. There are other murals that have been covered up in the auditorium, and unfortunately some murals that have been painted over, but those are always easy to, to get back. Uh, when they're gone completely, it's one thing, but we can always peel back the paint and find what was there. Now, the King of the Golden River is more or less an environmental parable uh, about a young boy and two evil brothers um, who trick him into melting down the golden cup and it summons the west wind. Uh, in the auditorium lobby, or in the auditorium itself, you'll see the hound dog, the evil brothers, the golden cup, and you'll see the west wind, which is what is rises up when the cup is melted, right over the proscenium. Uh, that's also called tragedy triumphant. Most people can't even imagine that this is here. And part of what the Theater Foundation does is tries to make people aware of the treasures that we have here, feeling if more people realize that these are in fact irreplaceable works of art that we can restore and bring back. It's like finding a da Vinci behind the, the dining room wall. Uh, and as we peel back the layers of this theater over time, people are going to be completely amazed. We are standing uh, looking at what every patron who came into the million dollar would have seen. This would have marked the western end of the vaulted lobby, which is all around us. And one of the incredible things uh, that I haven't seen anywhere else is that Woolett painted directly onto the raw concrete. You can still see the forms where the wooden boards were. It still has various levels. And then he has actually put lots and lots of textured paint, just layers and layers to bring the design out of the wall. Uh, the painting across here we see is a bracket and splayed over it is for lack of a better word, and we'll find the right one for you, is the Fire Maiden. Uh, with her head here, body going down, hands there, and then you see her one leg there, one on the other side.
but the critics, that was part of just how unusual and exciting this theater was. Um, in that they would even think about painting on raw concrete in a theater that cost a million dollars in 1918. Uh, this is an idea that Woollett and Grauman used when they built their huge theater, uh, the Metropolitan, over across from Pershing Square. Uh, we lost the Metropolitan in 67, but it uh, was close to 4,000 seats and an incredible theater. Just If this gets you an idea of what the possibilities are, the, uh, the Metropolitan took those possibilities to the next level. The bracket you see hanging there originally had a long pendant a chain coming down with a long oval pendant light on it. Uh, we have a photograph of the light. Uh, one day when we bring this theater back, we'll be able, if not to reproduce it, at least put something there that is suggestive of what the light originally looked like. Same thing with the brackets over the windows. We'd probably reopen the window. This time we'd put some drapes or some sort of covering to protect us from the sun. Now there's one more mural up here that we want to show you. It'll take us a minute to set up, but I think you're really going to like this one. 